my intention on this adventure was to take you guys into Goldfield and show you all the cool stuff they have there, but I came across this little gem, the International Car Forest. We definitely got to check this out. You want to go? Let's do it. Anna, you don't look like you're having a good time. What is the problem? You told me you're taking me to an art museum. Well, you know, this whole area is a museum of sorts. And, you know, this looks... Does this look like art to you? A junkyard? Okay, well, they say, you know, one man's junk's another man's treasure. Anyway, let's press on. Let's see more what the car forest has to offer us. Uh, and then we'll head on into Goldfield and check out the town. You want to check out the town? Yes. All right, so everybody stick around. We're going to check that out. Uh, but for right now, we're going to see what the car forest has to offer. So, I mean, this place is pretty amazing. I mean, who would have thought just to kind of like get a bunch of old junky cars and kind of paint them and just plant them in the ground like a tree. So, I don't know. Some people call this art. I don't know. I just call it an interesting place. I mean, it's kind of cool. I mean, Anna, she's the, technically the artist. We'll ask her in a little bit if she considered this art. And uh, what kind of art you would consider it? You know, it's, it's obviously not traditional art. Uh, that is for sure. But anyway, let's kind of pan around and uh, see what it looks like down there. Check out what's going on down there. It looks pretty interesting. That's kind of one thing I, I mean, I may have pointed out in other videos about one of the unique things about the desert, especially out here in the Nevada desert, is uh, some of the odd things you're just going to come across. I mean, we're driving here. And like I said, my intention was to take you to Goldfield and we're going to get there. So, and we are going to head out in a little bit and we're going to take you to the Goldfield Hotel. That uh, is supposed to be a haunted hotel, and it's all, we're actually going to take you to a, a site of a famous boxing match that took place in like 1906, and it went like 42 rounds, and I'll take you to the side of that, so hang around for that. Good stuff coming up, so don't leave me. Like I was saying, you know, some people consider this art. Uh, I don't know, you know, I guess art is in the eye of the beholder and you consider this art and I don't know. It's a kind of a collection of cars. So, so Anna, we've been walking around a little bit and some people would consider this art. How about you? You're the artist. What do you think? Well, let's review. Would you pay to get this car displayed in your living room? No. And the fact that it was free to get in here was a bargain to me. So I don't think I would have paid to come in here. But it's kind of interesting to look at. I mean, it's kind of cool. You know, that's the kind of thing I was talking about. This all, all these oddities in the desert. And this is definitely an oddity. Would you call this an oddity? It's an oddity. Okay, sure. there you go. We have an oddity. Okay, so hang around. We're headed into town. And we're going to show you some more cool stuff. So don't go Don't go away. Let's, let's do it. And leave the comments if you think this is art. Yeah, that's a good point there. If you think this is art, leave some comments uh, and uh, what your opinion may be on this. On this very spot, 1906, there was a boxing match that lasted 42 rounds between Gans and Nelson. Now, the thing just went on and on and on. It probably would have just kept going, 
but I believe I thought it was Gans that blasted Nelson in the package in the 42nd round that got him disqualified. But just think, like a, over 100 years ago, how many people were in this town to witness that fight? That's probably kind of cool. All right, so I'm gonna walk down to the old schoolhouse. It's a pretty famous schoolhouse. Um, hasn't many, but hasn't been anybody here in years as far as uh, taking classes. They say it's haunted, but then again, there's a lot of things in the old west that are claimed that are haunted. Uh, I don't know. I, I, you know, I guess there was so much brutality back then and so many people died violent deaths out here in the old west that it's quite possible that there's uh, some unrested souls that are out here. But for whatever reason, they say the schoolhouse right here behind me is a... Uh, it's haunted. Now, let me see. Ooh, there's a gate. Maybe I can get a little bit closer. Let's see if I can get in. There's probably padlock, but we're going to try to just walk up and maybe get a better, closer look around on the grounds here. All right. All right. Looks like it might be unsecure here. See if I can get in here. Oh, look at this. Here we go. You're inside the old schoolhouse. Cool. All right. Oh, sounds like somebody's in here. Yeah. Okay. So, sounds like this. Sounds like some workers working. Might have to scram out of here. So, but at least we get to take a peek inside. All right. All right. I'm getting out of here before uh, anybody comes and sees me. <laughs> so, but there's definitely not ghosts inside. It sounds like somebody's working on the second floor up there. So, uh, we're going to just get out of here for now. And uh, I know you're waiting for me to show you the haunted hotel. I mean, that's what this town is famous for. So, we're going to get there. So, Anna, you ready to go to the haunted hotel? You ready to go? She hates the haunted stuff. I love it. But, uh, you know, I think most of these are just old stories that get passed down from generation to generation. Why things are haunted. So we're going to go out there and I'm fairly certain we can't get inside the hotel. I know they got that boarded up. But at least we can get you outside. Maybe just tell you a little bit about it. Okay, cool. got itself going around in the early 1900s uh, and between like 1903 and 1940 it was just pumping out the gold in the area and that's how it got its name it got its name because of the gold obviously gold field you know you can do the math on that one so but anyway uh, what makes this town so famous is uh, the thing behind me here I mean check it out that's the Goldfield Hotel now they talk about this hotel and why it is uh, haunted apparently uh, I guess it was the owner, the guy who built it, I think his name was Wingfield. He had a mistress. And uh, he, uh, he got her knocked out, he knocked her up. And uh, apparently that uh, he um, just kind of pushed her aside and didn't really ever want anything to do with her. And uh, I think they just broke her up. And I think she's pissed off to this day still. And that's why they say she's in this hotel. She walks the, walks the halls at night, because uh, she's bitter. I mean, I would be too. So, anyway, that's the story with this place. So, would you stay here? I mean, to say the truth, no one stayed here since 1945. Actually, it was the army were the last tenants of this hotel. Believe me, uh, I'm thinking it was probably, they probably had people here staying here during World War II. There was a lot of bases in and around this area. And after the war was over with, they just packed up and left. So, but there's been nobody here since. And they've had a few people that have kind of bought the hotel and kind of, you know, uh, try to revive it and to try to get it going. And I think they might be able to do that someday. I mean, it's kind of a cool area. Uh, it would be a great spot for tourists to stop. I mean, 
check her out. The Goldfield Hotel. Now, I don't know if you ever saw the movie, movie Cherry 2000, but this is actually the fictitious, fictitious town in that movie called Glory Hole. And this is where they came to film one of the scenes. I think, think it was called The Sinker Room. Anyway, if you haven't seen that movie, go check it out. It's pretty cool. I mean, it's in the 80s. Uh, but anyway, I'm loving this place. I'm just kind of just panning around. So, believe it or not, they checked this out. They've got a radio station here. 89.1. I don't know what kind of music they play. Probably country. But, uh, it's kind of a cool place. Now, if you ever drive from Las Vegas to Reno, you're going to pass through this place. Hey, I suggest stopping here. You won't, you won't, uh, you won't regret it. It's kind of cool. Very rustic. Is this the preferred mode of transportation in Tonopah? I mean, in a uh, gold field? Uh, honestly, this is what we like to do. Yeah? So, just bring the horses around here. Cool. You guys live here? Yep. All right. How many people live in this town? About uh, 300. About 300. 300? Yeah. It's kind of a quiet place, though. You like, you like it here? Yes. All right. Well, thank you. Yeah, thank you. All right. Have a great day. You too. So as the ladies would say on the horses, there's about 300 people that live here now. But back in its boom days, it was about 20,000 people that lived here in Goldfield. But kind of now it's just... It went... Actually, check this out. This was the largest city in the state of Nevada at one time. And now it's just kind of a, a ghost town. You know, what they consider a ghost town. I mean, people still come. People still live here, obviously. But it's just a, a mere shadow or a shell of what it once was but i kind of like it goldfield nevada i'm liking it so one of the things i wanted to mention too like some of the famous residents of this town back in the day that wyatt Earp and virgil Earp actually lived here in goldfield nevada now uh, virgil was the sheriff um it was early 1900s and i believe he died and after he died wyatt left there was no reason for him to stay here so but anyway the Earps, man they patrolled these streets I wonder if the Mozart Tavern was open. Probably not. Anyway, I'm going to go check it out. I'm going to see if it's open. You guys ready for a beer? I am. So let's, uh, let's head on over to the Mozart Tavern. Hopefully it's not closed. Hopefully it's open. Okay, so we found ourselves actually a bar in town, uh, a saloon. There's a couple of saloons. This is Beer Row. Apparently uh, they got the Northern Saloon and Cafe over here and the Hoist House right here. Hey, let's go check out. I'm going to go check out the Hoist House. What do you think? Wrapping up here at Goldfield, Nevada from the Hoist House. Uh, they didn't really have a lot of choices for me to drink, so I kind of got the Pacifico. It's not too bad. You've had it before. We've all had it before, so there's nothing to see here. But I do need a beer, and it is Beers and Frontiers. And I do catch a lot of flack sometimes if I don't drink on my videos, so I am today. So, but that's all we have for now. So, cheers from Beers and Frontiers.